Levodopa is a dopamine precursor used in the management of Parkinson's disease, often in combination with carbidopa, as well as other conditions associated with Parkinsonism. In this video, let's find found. What is carbidopa slash levodopa? What is carbidopa slash levodopa used for? Contraindication. What are the side effects of taking carbidopa slash levodopa? How does carbidopa slash levodopa work? How to use carbidopa slash levodopa? What is carbidopa slash levodopa? Carbidopa slash levodopa, also known as levocarb and cocaraldopa, is the combination of the two medications carbidopa and levodopa. It is primarily used to manage the symptoms of Parkinson's disease, but it does not slow down the disease or stop it from getting worse. It is taken by mouth. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. It is available as a generic medication. In 2020, it was the 364th most commonly prescribed medication in the United States, with more than 500,000 prescriptions. What is carbidopa slash levodopa used for? Levodopa on its own is formulated as an oral inhalation powder indicated for intermittent treatment of off episodes in Parkinson's patients who are already being treated with carbidopa and levodopa. Levodopa is most commonly formulated as an oral tablet with a peripheral dopa decarboxylase inhibitor indicated for treatment of Parkinson's disease, postencephalitic Parkinsonism, and symptomatic Parkinsonism following carbon monoxide intoxication or manganese intoxication. Contraindication Carbidopa and levodopa extended release tablets are contraindicated in patients with known hypersensitivity to any component of this drug and in patients with narrow-angle glaucoma. Side effects Common side effects include dizziness, drowsiness, blurred vision, vomiting, nausea, dry mouth, low appetite, heartburn, diarrhea, constipation, frequent sneezing, stuffiness of the nose, any of the symptoms of ordinary common cold, cough, muscle pain, hallucinations, numbness or a tingling sensation disturbances of sleep, skin rash, itching, and or headache. Pharmacodynamic. Levodopa is able to cross the blood-brain barrier, while dopamine is not. The addition of a peripheral dopa decarboxylase inhibitor prevents the conversion of levodopa to dopamine in the periphery so that more levodopa can reach the blood-brain barrier. Once past the blood-brain barrier, levodopa is converted to dopamine by aromatic L amino acid decarboxylase. When mixed with levodopa, carbidopa inhibits the peripheral conversion of levodopa to dopamine and the decarboxylation of oxytriptan to serotonin by aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase. This results in an increased amount of levodopa and oxytriptan available for transport to the central nervous system. Carbidopa also inhibits the metabolism of levodopa in the GI tract, thus increasing the bioavailability of levodopa. Mechanism of Action Levodopa, by various routes, crosses the blood-brain barrier and is decarboxylated to form dopamine. This supplemental dopamine performs the role that endogenous dopamine cannot do to a decrease of natural concentrations and stimulates dopaminergic receptors. Carbidopa is an inhibitor of the DDC which, in order, inhibits the peripheral metabolism of levodopa. DDC is very important in the biosynthesis of L-tryptophan to serotonin and the modification of L-dopa to dopamine. DDC can be found in the body periphery and in the blood-brain barrier. The action of carbidopa just on peripheral DDC as this drug cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. Hence, it will prevent the metabolism of levodopa in the periphery but it will not have any activity on the generation of dopamine in the brain. Half-life 2.3 hours for orally inhaled levodopa. Oral levodopa has a half-life of 50 minutes, but when combined with a peripheral dopa decarboxylase inhibitor, the half-life is increased to 1.5 hours. Dose. Parkinson disease and Parkinson-like disorders. Indicated for Parkinson disease, postencephalitic Parkinsonism, and symptomatic Parkinsonism that may follow carbon monoxide intoxication or manganese intoxication. Maintain patients on the lowest dosage required to achieve symptomatic control and to minimize adverse reactions such as dyskinesia and nausea. Cinemet. 
Immediate release and oral disintegrating tablets, 25 mg per 100 mg Q8HR or 10 mg per 100 mg POQ6-8HR initially, levodopa may be increased 100 mg per day every 1 to 2 days. Carbidopa should be 70 to 100 mg slash day, but not to exceed 200 mg per day, levodopa not to exceed 800 mg per day. Cinemet CR, 50 mg per 200 mg PO, Q12 HR initially, may be increased to 1,600 mg per day of levodopa. Doses must be given at least 6 hours apart. Writery. Contains immediate release and extended release beads. Levodopa Naive, 23.75 mg per 95 mg POTID initially, on treatment day 4, may increase to 36.25 mg per 145 mg TID. Dose may be increased up to a maximum recommended dose of 97.5 mg per 390 mg TID. Dosing frequency may be changed from 3x slash day to a maximum of 5x slash day if more frequent dosing is needed and if tolerated, up to a maximum recommended daily dose 612.5 mg per 2450 mg divi. Initial dose, 1 tablet, carbidopa 25 mg slash levodopa 100 mg, POTID. May dosage by up to one whole tablet Q-day or every other day as needed to a maximum daily dosage, to 8 whole tablets. Tablets scored into 4 segments of 6.25 mg slash 25 mg slash segment, to allow precise titration and dosage flexibility. Individualize and adjust dosing according to clinical response and tolerability. Safety Advice US FDA Pregnancy Category C Animal reproduction studies have shown an adverse effect on the fetus and there are no adequate and well-controlled studies in humans, but potential benefits may warrant use of the drug in pregnant women despite potential risks. That's all the information about carbidopa slash levodopa we collected. Thanks for listening. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe for the He Info channel if you like this video to update more health information.